in Lesson 78, Part 4, we continue our series, True or False. Um, one of my main influences in my golfing life, if not the main influence, apart from Ben Hogan's book, was my old mentor, the late, great Alex Hay. Alex Hay was the commentator on BBC alongside Peter Alice from 1978 for another 26 years. So, he sorely missed, but he did leave his book behind called The Mechanics of Golf. And why is it a special book? Well, it's because there's so much good content in, it's very concise, it's not a big book, and the drawings were done by Alex himself. And when you're working in um, pen and ink, you can sometimes exaggerate a theme more than even the photograph. And here is Alex showing the choice between a long thumb or a short thumb. So today's question is, true or false? Should you have a long thumb or should you have a short thumb? And there's some great golfers like Mark James, who was superb golf Ryder Cup captain, uh, Fuzzy Zeller, lots of players that had a long left thumb. So I would say long left thumb is a falsehood and a neat or neutral left thumb is true and what we want to actually use. Just going to uh, hit a six down for you here. So I lean forward off the club and I lean, I tip from the hip. Now I hope you can see that my left thumb does nothing excessive. So from that situation, I can load and go through. Turn back to you and you can see that the thumb is parallel to the shaft but level with the first knuckle or the first joint on the index finger. So, turn my hands to you. Steve Elkinson said that if he could have cosmetic surgery, he would choose to have his thumbs stitched to his index fingers. That's a bit drastic, but I understand what he's thinking. Because when you glue your, or stitch your thumbs to your index finger, you get a sense of the left thumb bone and the index finger bones being in parallel. So have a look at that. There's the club, lean forward and build the grip. So this is a neat left thumb. It goes as far as the fir first knuckle. Just have a look at that. Just check the way that you're made. You'll find that the tip of your thumbnail will be level with the first joint of your index finger. We don't want it crunched up. That would be bad, you'd, you'd get discomfort, you'd lose control of the club face. But it's very common for people to strengthen the grip. And the moment the thumb goes beyond the first knuckle, joint or the first joint on the its finger, this collapses and corrupts and we've got big problems now. It is possible to be sneaky and to slide the thumb down the handle without this corrupting. Generally people do this, but it is possible in the proficient player they have a long thumb and rather than the pressure being in the pad where it should be, the pressure is on the joint of the thumb and you'll find that you'll wear your glove out and in, in the thumbnail. So to, Save yourself money on gloves, they're expensive enough. Make sure that you're using the thumb pad on the grip and not the joint. You'll notice that as I tip forward and the thumb is parallel and neat, I can only cock my wrist to 90 degrees. Can you see that? It doesn't go more than 90, that's the limit. However, if I move my thumb just one inch, I'm now permitted to go to 135 degrees. But I'm not made like that. If I was made like that, the shaft would come out of your left forearm, wonderful if you're playing golf out of a bush. But the ball tends to be on the floor, and if you then drop that, you've arched your wrist, you're going to get RSIs and lots of different problems in the long term. It can even affect your back and your legs if you grip the club too strongly. So, if we understand neutral, the left thumb is parallel and in the pad. And we can see that if we get that neat left thumb, level with the first joint on the index finger, we get 90 degrees of wrist cock and no more. You can see again, extra inch, 135. Common fault in lady golfers, the thumb goes down the shaft. Okay, not only that, if the thumb is neutral and parallel, you actually hinge in plane. If you have a strong diagonal thumb and a long thumb, you will probably hinge across the plane at the top. You'll go this way. If you're a salad dodger with a big tummy and your hand comes in like this and the thumb is long and diagonal, you'll hinge over the plane and you'll swing at the top. The key is we're all slightly different physiologically or quite a lot different. When you tip from the hip and the thumb is neat, you're safe. So, true or false, 
long thumb or short thumb? Well, the truth is we need a short or neutral thumb, not a crunched up, artificially short thumb, but that's the way the thumb is. There it is, and the club flows out of your forearm at the correct angle. You get your 90 degrees, but also you swing in plane. If the thumb is diagonal this way or that way, you get problems up here. You'll know from various uh, lessons and tips I've given you in the past, 90% of swing faults start at address, and the other 10%, they start at address as well. So it's very important to have a good grip. And as I said earlier, you can't really have a good grip without good posture.